Hello, my name is Melvin Wei. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I have many plant growing series. This is the first episode of growing avocado trees from seeds. I know it's plural. That's just the way I name my plant growing series. But it's actually just a singular example because these pits are so big. If a plant has small seeds and I have an uncertain chance of success, then I'll plant multiple of them. But from experience, I know that this is going to be huge. So it's a big ripe avocado. This pole that we're facing with the sort of uh, yellowish exposed region that doesn't have that chestnut colored skin, that's where it's going to crack open and send out a root from. So the first step is to wipe away this excess avocado fruit flesh that's very greasy. And that's not enough because I can still feel that this is all greasy and covered in the fat of the avocado fruit. So what that'll do is it will repel water and prevent moisture and water from soaking into that pole and getting in there and causing it to expand and crack open. So the next step is I washed it with a soapy sponge and rinsed thoroughly. And I discovered there was actually a small crack in there and hence I don't want the prospect of soap getting in there. So I did a lot of rinsing and this step is up to you as to whether you want to peel away the so-called skin of this seed or not. You can see a little crack there already. I peeled away just the little bit that I could. I didn't go through all the trouble of trying to get the whole thing uh, naked. So I made a custom planter using stack soft plastic waste baskets with holes that I drilled in there. I'm just showing you the steps in quick succession. I'm not going to um, show the entire process and um, but you can see what's going on basically get rid of the sticker and then drill some holes uh, small holes for the inner waste basket I don't want the holes in the inner waste basket to be too large because then all of the growing medium that I'm planning to use which I'll show you later would just leak out into this outer container which has two functions it's a overflow catch tray and it also provides structural support. These are soft waste baskets and I'm going to put a lot of weight of growing medium in there. So I wasn't sure that just one would be enough. So in this series of uh, clips, I'm obtaining filtered clay soil from the hills in my neighborhood. I live in San Diego, California, and this is very typical of the soil. It's sort of uh, brownish red. It's very fine when dry. So this was actually done uh, three days after it rained a little bit which is just perfect it didn't generate any dust and I made a 75 percent sand 25 percent clay soil mixture for my plants this is very fine of a clay soil mixture because it's been filtered it's typically full of rocks and little pebbles out there which I don't need it's true that that stuff could provide for a lot of extra spacing and drainage but I feel that it's way too coarse I think sand is good enough. Of course I could have used something like perlite and other kinds of spacers whether they're synthetic or not but I sort of forgot about those options so I'm going with sand which is really really heavy and a container that's full like this will kind of tend to exhaust your back if you pick it up to uh, move it around too many times. So one of the many reasons I don't grow my plants in rotting organic matter anymore, uh, which is what most people actually grow their plants in, is because if you look at these examples of some corporate plants that have been around in these concrete planters for a few years, everything just falls down. Um, there's no structure in there, so when the plant gets too heavy, it tends to shift around. It can't grow straight. Um, I water the sand soil mixture in this planter, which I didn't show you until it was saturated. I left it out on my balcony, poured the runoff, and uh, let it sit exposed to air for, I don't know, maybe two days. And then I did this. So it's sort of like wet beach sand. It's got clay in it, but it more or less has the consistency of beach sand because it's 75% sand. I've tried 50-50 uh, mixtures, and that just congeals together like a mud sun-dried brick. So I planted the avocado pit with the pole that I mentioned earlier facing down. Um, 
directly down perpendicular to the ground as best as I could and on day 37 a chute came out and hit the plastic wrap within hours so that happened very suddenly and the purpose of the plastic wrap of course is to preserve the moisture so the top doesn't dry out and the indoor temperatures have been steady around 72 Fahrenheit 22 Celsius and the great advantage of this method is by keeping this indoors the entire container is that temperature even at nighttime whereas outside it would be very cold at night so it's day 39 and as you can see there's been some progress the shoe is sticking up uh, above where the plastic wrap was so I believe that doing this indoors um, when it doesn't need any sunlight is one of the keys to getting fast consistent germination it's day 49 I move my seedling out onto the balcony for sunlight it's cold outside at night it's still uh, February so basically the temperatures were typically around the, maybe the high 40s in Fahrenheit uh, maybe the low or mid 50s on many days so that severely inhibits the growth and the progress of a plant but at the same time I wanted this to get some sunlight and get acclimated into real world conditions so it's day 57 it's still all stem and no leaf development this thing is shooting up like nothing I've ever seen it's very tall um, many inches I haven't had an avocado seedling develop like this maybe it's because my conditions are different maybe it's supposed to be all stem and no leaf in the beginning and I've seen really good results with chemical fertilization miracle Grow in 2019 with all my other plants and my plant series so I'm going to go ahead and try this I know the seed itself of an avocado is huge and it contains a lot of reserves that a plant can use to develop in the beginning hence why the seedling is so giant already it's day 64 and there's more stem elongation that's many many more inches taller than it was just two or three weeks ago and you can see the color of the miracle grow down there is still staying in the sand so we're starting to get some leaf development and like I was saying earlier I've seen really good results I've heard I've read that avocados are nitrogen hogs they use nitrogen like crazy and this is a very a relatively poor growing medium it's 75 percent sand which provides for great aeration and it's day 71 leaf development pace has been glacial but it's coming along and there are these little vestigial uh, leaf wannabe things kind of hanging around on the sides and um, that happens with avocado stems um, developing seedlings and uh, they don't really go anywhere so my thumb and index finger span is about 8 inches 20 centimeters so I'd estimate this to be about 11 inches tall, 28 centimeters. So that's quite amazing in terms of plant height uh, without even having um, noticeable like leaf development. So I'm fertilizing a little bit more. I don't have to do this every week. I could do it every two weeks. And I'm going to do some flood watering at the top. I tend to use distilled water, uh, tap water if I don't have that luxury if it's summertime so it's day 77 there's a little weed there that's not really going anywhere and the base of this stem is thickening so as I was mentioning before the fertilization uh, maybe it's not necessary at this point of course it's not necessary in the absolute sense but I believe it'll give me a huge boost with plant development and the leaves are finally starting to come out they're sort of a yellowish green and they're becoming more more green at this point than they were before which is good because I'm starting to get worried there because in the past I had many growing attempts for avocado and if the plants dying then it sort of gets to not even this stage but you'll see the leaves are yellow and then the whole thing just croaks so you can see some little leaves um, further down on the stem of these main leaves um, I don't know what those are about they never get really that big in my experience so I'm squirting some fertilizer again basically doing the same thing I'm not watering too much although this setup was designed to 
um, enable basically unlimited watering and if I do unlimited watering and just um, run out of the catch tray holes the large holes that I drilled in the outer trash can so it's day 85 um, the plants a foot tall 30.5 centimeters with yellow green leaves they're getting greener the leaves are starting to grow and things are looking pretty good um, it hasn't been that fast but that's because the weather is cold and this is meant to grow in a more tropical environment such as Mexico in the jungle um, not someplace uh, further north like here in San Diego although there are a lot of avocado trees grown in California as far as I'm aware uh, it's just that they require so much water so I'm just going to use this squirt bottle. Um, I'll tend to try to keep the, the soil and sand mixture down and within this container sort of on the drier side because this is one of those plants that has a very very high oxygen requirement for its root system and if you interfere with that by uh, having the bottom half be totally waterlogged sitting in water that could be a problem although it's really a question of whether the water is oxygenated or not and if you have rotting organic material down there the microbes used in the decomposition will hog up all the oxygen and generate toxic gases and kill off many a plant species so that's why I chose not to use something like potting mix and plus it just attracts unlimited bugs so that's it for the first episode it's pretty condensed Thanks for watching and stay tuned to my YouTube channel for further updates. Welcome back for a second episode of my avocado series reboot. It's day 93. There's a little weed growing at the edge. It's not going anywhere fast, so I can ignore it for the time being and pull it later. There are these little vestigial leaves, as I'm calling them, on the sides. They're all brown and withered, but at one point they looked like these two that you see above. They look like promising developing leaves, but they never become actual large sized leaves, just as this sixth one, if you go up the stem and count, is stunted and more ovular. Then you get this leaf, which is uh, more of an adult, uh, mature leaf that we're accustomed to expect. And there are six big leaves in total, they're all different sizes. It's sort of reminiscent of my mango tree growing experience. All the leaves are somewhat different sizes and even different shapes sometimes. And the coloration varies, although in this case it's not nearly as beautiful as the mango tree that's developing, where the new sets of leaves have a red, yellow, green progression. This is my first application of a midocloprid for this avocado seedling. Midocloprid is the most popular pesticide in the world. The way it works is you dissolve it in water, uh, feed the plant like this, it gets absorbed through the root system and travels up through the vascular tissue of the plant until all the cells have this compound in them. And if various kinds of pests try to feed on your plant, then they'll get poisoned. So it doesn't prevent the damage done by that initial feeding, but it prevents colonization of your plant in the case of things like spider mites that are really nasty and can quickly overwhelm your plant with their fast reproductive and feeding capabilities. So I decided to use this as an insurance policy essentially to protect my plant even though I don't really see signs of predation or infestation right now uh, based on the past experiences that I've had with trying to grow avocado a lot of them started having these little webbings uh, reminiscent of spider mite webbings um, in a stage far earlier than this so I think there is merit to the theory that if your root system is unhealthy then you will get infestations and your leaves will look sickly so it's day 99 my seedling is about 14 inches tall or 35 centimeters uh, my index thumb span that I was just showing you that's about 20 centimeters or 8 inches so it's a good way for me to estimate the height of my young plants and also the length of my foliage so the plant is doing well 
It has great turgor pressure. All the leaves are roughly parallel to the ground, which is a great sign. So the coloration is excellent. It looks healthier than it did before. Of course, some of this darker color comes with maturation of the leaves. But it's on a balcony. It doesn't get that much sun. It gets some morning sun, even at the most, maybe four and a half hours when it's close to the, the summer solstice. And that's not a lot at all compared to the wild. But in my very first series in 2016, I remember discussing this with some of my viewers and it's debatable as to how much sun this should get. Maybe it should be a shade plant when it's young. I don't know. I have never had access to full sun, so that would have been very interesting. Uh, someday I will. I'll make a point to see that it happens. But for now, I'm uh, in a lot of situations where it's just like balconies. So balconies are very problematic. You just don't get a full day's worth of sun. So especially for something like my Joshua tree, which grows in environments that are flat high valleys where the sun is uh, beating down on the plants for like, I don't know, maybe like 14 hours a day or something like that. Um, on my balcony there are limited options. So I can only provide the best nutrition and water that I can and the best soil. So that little weed is gone. It's day 106. It's uh, one of these rare clips where I'm showing you one of my plants outside, not just on my balcony or indoors. So the foliage is sort of a light green. And granted, some of this has to do with the lighting being different underneath uh, the sun of a cloudy day. But yeah, it's looking pretty healthy. Uh, leaves didn't break in the wind and um, yeah, it's still just these six main leaves with um, this progression in size going up the stem so um, yeah, that's pretty typical I would say of the development it's day 120 I finally moved to a new place I was in the old complex for slightly over 10 years and I had been in many units there but I'm really excited to be in a new place. This balcony is 50% bigger, but to my uh, chagrin, it does not receive direct sunlight in spring. Nevertheless, a heat wave in late April to mid-May accelerated growth for all of my plants, and you can clearly see that here. So by heat wave, I mean I live in San Diego, and typically it's a little chillier at this time of year, although it's still very warm compared to many other regions in North America. So by heat wave, I mean we had temperatures up to 80 Fahrenheit or so. Uh, for Celsius, you know, that's high 20s. Uh, not much beyond that, but I had to start using the air conditioning to cool my um, new place. I'm using a less concentrated fertilizer application this time. The small measuring scoop that came with my fertilizer is flawed. It's better to use the big scoop and of course it's better, it's more accurate to use a huge volume of water such as one big scoop per gallon instead of trying to divvy up a large scoop or use a small scoop to estimate for something like half a liter in a squirt bottle, something like that. So uh, the leaves are pretty dusty. Uh, I did a lot of cleaning. I did a lot of cleaning on this balcony. And I just want to wash away all the dust and the dirt. So after the recent heat wave induced growth spurt, the leaves are much bigger now. They still have an excellent amount of structure and turgor pressure. They're parallel to the ground. They're a much more handsome dark green than they were before. So things are really looking up. I'm really happy with the progress. I've never had an avocado seedling go this far. And it's basically all up to the soil mixture, which is a 75% sand, 25% clay soil mix. That's the most important thing. This plant has very high oxygen requirement for its roots. So uh, root breathability is number one in importance, I'd say. 
So it's day 127. My seedling is much taller now. It's about 18 inches or 45 centimeters tall. The leaves are looking a little bit weathered. They're much larger and a little bit more droopy now. I suppose that just comes with age and no plant that I've ever grown, at least not outside on a balcony that didn't have a few defects after a while versus um, that series where I grew a mango on a microfiber towel in a plastic container that uh, looked very pristine until at some point the root system just couldn't take it anymore and then just stalled out. So the new foliage is very shiny and waxy. It's kind of weird how as they get big they lose their sheen and waxiness and seem to not be as well protected. So here's a view of the outside of my balcony and it's mostly just a few pine trees here and there, uh, nothing that blocks the light, but there is an overhang for this balcony. So uh, not much light can get in even from an angle. So I've drilled uh, two holes at the bottom of each pot of these pots that I've made out of two waste baskets, two rubber made waste baskets. So now it gets complete drainage. On the first night, um, a lot of that water in the between the two trash cans drained out and it stank. So I knew that was fetid water accumulating. That was no good. But now that's not a problem anymore. So it's day 133. And as you can see, the second set of leaves is much bigger. They go through these odd day and night cycles. Um, I can't really predict it, but these new leaves, they are sometimes at a very acute angle pointing more than 45 degrees up. And other times, like now, they're just sort of uh, parallel or even droopy looking. So I don't really know why the plant does that, but it's just something that I've noticed Looking ahead, I hope my avocado seedling can maintain this toward pace of growth. Thanks for watching and please stay tuned for further updates. Hello and welcome back for a third episode of Growing Avocado Trees from Seeds. It's day 142. Seven days ago, each plant out of my six plants received on average half a gallon of dissolved miracle Grow fertilizer. I followed the instructions. I thought that would be okay. Uh, one large scoop per gallon. But if you look at the second set of leaves, um, they all seem to be curled except for that one that's higher on the left and maybe the newest one in the back on top. So there's one leaf here on the left that looks like it has leaf burn. This leaf that I'm looking at right now is curled. I don't know if that damage can be undone by further growth in the upcoming days. We'll see. And here's a leaf burn that I'm talking about. It's basically salt burn. So what happens is when the concentration of salt and other solutes in the soil mixture or whatever your growing medium is, is too high, then that sucks water out of the plant versus the normal process of the root system of the plant sucking in water from the soil. And there seems to be a tilt in the stem as well. You can see that in the background. So I'm sensing a general loss of turgor pressure. So it's not too bad now, but if I were to add more fertilizer and hence more solutes into the sand soil mixture, that would be disastrous. But even just going down this route, it could be pretty disastrous as well. The leaf development will be all gnarly. So I've seen that in the past and not always knew what it was, but now it's pretty obvious after that last fertilization. So I thought about it for a while and my course of action is to do a couple of tap water flushes which I'm doing right now. So after I realized the error of my ways I flushed all my pots with tap water multiple times to get rid of excess salt and solutes. So the way I have my pot set up is I have usually inch and a half or two inches of space vertically on the top before I get to the rim of the pot. And since these don't drain very well, all I can do is to flood them. Actually, the avocado pot does drain better than the other ones, even though they're all supposed to be the same 75% sand, 25% clay soil mixture. I did get the clay soil on different dates, though. So depending on where I dug that up from, 
there could be a different composition of clay, uh, silt, and sand. Greater percentage of sand and silt versus clay in a soil sample means the permeability will be that much better. Water and oxygen can get through much easier. Sand is the biggest kind of particle in soil. Silt is smaller and clay is very, very small, sometimes just several atoms wide in particle size. So it's day 149. I did another flush of all the pots with tap water four days ago. Nonetheless, this small original leaf has been recycled for its nutrients by the plant. So that tends to signal that there's not enough um, nutrients being taken up. But in this case, I, I know that's not true because I blasted everything with fertilizer before. Sometimes uh, plants under whatever kind of stress just do that. So that's no real loss unless it keeps happening. Uh, these leaves are still kind of curly, a little bit too uh, convex for my taste. But I think given my response to the situation, uh, this is the best I could have hoped for. That leaf that's facing away from us is the one that's uh, the most curled. And even this new leaf on top is very, very curled. So hopefully I can get enough growth over the upcoming weeks to kind of flatten things out. And I think I will. So it's day 155. I did another great tap water flush three days ago. So there's not much change in this mature foliage on the bottom. But as you can see, the leaves, uh, the second set of leaves are getting really, really big. Um, especially the new leaf, you can tell there's no issues from salt burn. If you look at the mature leaves, they have this dark green, thick appearance and ruffled edges versus this leaf that we're looking at right in front of us. It's all light yellow green and waxy. So that seems to be the natural progression of how the leaves develop. They end up looking like this and they start off being um, a light green maybe even a light yellow green and some of these just never get bigger in size uh, the plant definitely picks and chooses like it does with the mango as to which ones it's going to really put in resources to develop to a large size like these two they're basically the size of a, a child's forearm so they're huge I wasn't expecting that I wasn't expecting a recovery on this order of magnitude, I thought, well, maybe these uh, second set of leaves are just wasted. You know, they're just going to look bad and all curly and be gnarled and malformed. But most of them recovered. The one that's pointing away from us, um, that's really curly. But the rest look fine to me. And it looks like we have more leaves on the way. So the size of this plant is uh, starting to become impressive. And I'm going to do a little bit of pruning work. I don't like this uh, salt burn leaf. I don't think it serves any purpose. I could always wait for the plant to recycle the nutrients, but that generally takes a really long time. And while I'm at it, I'll just get rid of that tiny little vestigial leaf, as I call them, um, attached to the stem between the first and the second sets of leaves. So we have plenty of leaf mass. There's a lot of real estate here for photosynthesis, although there's no direct sun hitting this balcony still. So I'm thinking the sun has to be on a different trajectory, or the earth rather. So that means maybe during winter we'll get direct sun for many hours on this balcony, but maybe you know the, the months bordering the summer solstice get nothing. So um, there's a lot of heat right now. I mean, I wouldn't say it's all disadvantages. Um, certainly, I think my plants will try to compensate by growing much, much bigger leaves to uh, capture whatever indirect sunlight, you know, the low thousands of lux probably uh, versus the 20 to 120,000 um, lux that they would be receiving in direct sunlight uh, throughout the day. So doing more of this uh, flood watering, as I call it, on top. And I think I'm on the right track. I don't believe that just even doing this uh, kind of watering, filling up to the rim, you know, even half a dozen times will wash out all the fertilizer in there. But maybe that's a good thing. Maybe you do want some of that residual fertilizer in there and nutrients. 
So it's day 162, another heat wave came, got up to the low 90s. If you look at the tops of the pots, they all dry out at different rates. So um, the composition is, is different. This one dried out the fastest, but part of that is due to the fact that these leaves are so big. Avocado is a real water hog. Despite that fact, it's very easy still to tell that this pot drains a lot faster just by flood watering all the way to the rim and watching this one drain out much faster than the others. So um, I'm not going to do a transplant to ameliorate the situation for any of these existing pots. I think they do have sufficient permeability to water and oxygen to thrive. All of my plants are currently doing well, but I think for future series I might further um, dilute the clay soil percentage so to speak and just have it be one eighth of the entire mix and seven eighths of it will be sand so that way um, I can get water to go through much quicker and hence uh, wash away any salts and solutes that are stuck in there plus all that extra oxygen getting into the root system will result in much more robust growth more robust than what you're even seeing here so it looks like some new leaves are on the way. Third set. Um, this thing is about 65 centimeters tall. Maybe it's about like two feet tall. So it's seen a pretty good amount of growth for how long has it been? Uh, 162 days. So this is definitely way further than I've ever gotten with any of my other avocado growing attempts. And it looks healthy. And the good news is I might not even need much fertilizer at all, maybe just a pinch. If I were to keep this up and do nothing but flush with gallon after gallon of tap water, my primary concern would be a lack of nutrients in the soil. But then again, there is a lot of clay in here still, and compared to those people that just grow an avocado seed in water and just develop a full-on sapling sitting in a jar of water after several years indoors, um, I think this will do a lot better than that, certainly it will grow a lot faster and be a lot more robust. I'm not that worried, but as for the other plants, uh, I'll have a wait and see attitude. But for now things are going really well, so why not just continue this. Thanks for watching and please stay tuned to my YouTube channel for further updates. Welcome back to my Growing Avocado Trees from Seed Series, it's day 165, the start of episode 4. Grow slow down for all my plants after about three weeks of repeated tap water flushings. So I've decided to resume my fertilization regime, but I'm using a smaller amount of miracle Grow, one small scoop instead of one large scoop per gallon. So that top of the pot all the way to the soil line varies in volume across the pots, but it might be about uh, 0.6 gallons somewhere between half a gallon to maybe two-thirds of a gallon but I suppose that's also not entirely accurate to characterize concentration of the fertilizer that gets in there as that ratio because I'm also going to water once more after this with the same amount of volume sometimes I water before so there's no real fixed formula here it's day 171 a third set of leaves is developing uh, first set of leaves is fully mature, has been for a very long time, and is hanging in there. The second set is also fully mature, a lot more ruffled because they're so big. They're basically parallel to the ground. So one of the hallmarks of successful plant growing, in my opinion, is if I'm not losing any of the early leaves, and I keep growing new ones, just like with my Joshua tree, then things are going really well. It's the rate at which you lose leaves that matters uh, just as much as the rate at which you gain new leaves. If you drop every previous leaf just to make a new set, then your plant isn't really going anywhere. It doesn't have enough nutrition, not enough nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and so on. So this is coming along very nicely. There's a little bit of leaf curl in one of the new leaves. Uh, we'll go over that in much more detail towards the end of the video where the phenomenon is very apparent. But I have noticed that definitely 
during the night at some point the leaves will kind of point upwards and when they're young they might um, be almost vertical or up by 45 to 60 degrees then as the leaves mature and are larger even though these petioles look really thick they never get higher than parallel anymore so you can see some leaf curl there since that leaf is so big and this one to the right as well um, it would just be too big of a loss to prune those just for aesthetic reasons so I always kept them it's day 175 I'm gonna stop using the span of my thumb and index finger to measure the leaves and the stem height so this tape measure tells me this avocado seedling is almost 27 inches tall or 68 centimeters definitely that's a, a decent height there are some people who have claimed more uh, such as four feet in eight months etc uh, this leaf is 10 inches long slightly in excess of that that's nine and a half so these are the biggest leaves I've ever seen in pictures or videos online of course uh, the people that made the four feet tall eight months um, you know I don't really know if they measured uh, with a tape measure like that or yardstick or whatever but uh, at least in terms of leaf size I've got almost everyone out there beat uh, these are these little vestigial leaves, as I'm calling them, that don't really get any bigger, don't do anything. So I'm going to do more watering, more fertilization every week. Um, so as I said before, it's a small scoop of miracle Grow plus a little pinch of vitamin dust every week. And that seems to be quite good for the time being. So I'll definitely have to adjust as the plant gets really big. Um, but for now, I think I don't want to approach the point at which uh, I increase the solute concentration in the sand soil mixture too much to where the plant has trouble uptaking water. So I think this is a, it's a pretty good spot where I'm at right now. And I'll just keep doing what I'm doing until I notice problems. So hopefully by then we'll have um, grown and matured this third set of leaves and the fourth and fifth and so on. I might run out of room to put this thing. So I've put a lot of thought into this because uh, in the past I really haven't had that much plant growing success in terms of getting these fruit trees to get really big. But now that there's the prospect that it might actually happen, I'm kind of worried that I won't have the space to deal with this. So this is uh, the morning at which uh, I just decided to film a little bit without the LED light panels just to show you that there's no direct sunlight. Uh, this is sort of uh, south facing. It's sort of a south southeast facing, but there are overhangs on three sides basically. You can see one of them right here and there's no light that's getting on there directly. So I think this place, uh, this balcony doesn't see direct sunlight until winter time. So maybe only for a few months when it's coldest. So it's day 182. So this is uh, same old, same old for the first set. Second set is matured long ago, so it's pretty much the same. Um, here's the biggest leaf. And going up, we can see the third set of leaves is uh, coming into its own. Uh, there is one of those, there's two vestigial leaves, one's pointing upwards, one's pointing downwards. So um, they're definitely bigger than those uh, little useless leaves for the first set and the second set, of which there were only one, I believe. So there's two of them, and they're bigger. So that's one, two, three, four, five, going up uh, stem, six seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve at the shoot apical marrow stem coming out. So that's twelve leaves in this third set. Um, that's a record for this plant. So it's kind of to be expected because as it develops um, it gets more and more energy from the existing leaves or solar panels that it's already established and the second set of leaves is, is pretty huge already so I do have high hopes for this third set because I'm continuously supplying macro and micronutrients for plant development, but at the same time, um, 
yeah, the, the leaves are higher up on this, so they get access to more light as well, and they get all the energy that's being produced from the first two sets of leaves. So I think the third set can be the most numerous and also have the uh, largest leaf sizes that I've seen to date, which would uh, maybe not dwarf the second set of leaves in terms of size, but maybe they'll be a little bit bigger, I'm thinking. But these leaves take a long time to mature, actually. It doesn't just happen in the span of one episode, typically. It seems like it might take uh, maybe like five weeks, six weeks even, for all these leaves to finish growing. So it's day 189. I did an emergency watering for all my plants today because there's a brutal heat wave that just struck. So in the inland deserts, uh, many places are very close to setting records. Uh, Death Valley is very close to setting a record. It's only off by uh, one degree or a few if you believe in um, the temperatures recorded in the 1930s in that place. But for here, it's not above 100, it's maybe high 80s, 90s um, for the highs of most days. So it's day 190. I had to water yesterday, I had a schedule because I couldn't wait until seven days. The giant Bangkok guava leaves to the left were all drooping. So everything recovered in short order. But these leaves are much bigger than those. And although there aren't as many of them, I was still worried about this plant suffering from drought stress. So I'll start watering in the middle of the week from now on. Notice that my avocado leaves expand on the top side faster in the middle phases of the growth than on the undersides. At least that's my theory causing this leaf curl that you see. The undersides grow in the middle of the night. Um, that's what I've observed time and time again. So I generally do wake up to more straightened leaves and when the leaves finally mature, they can fully straighten out. But for my second set, there were two that remained sort of deformed and curled. So there's a lot of empty space here around the positioning between the first and the second set of leaves. I believe that's due to phototropism. I rotate my pot every week, but it's not a perfect system. Ideally, this would be growing underneath full sun so that the Earth's rotation relative to the sun would give it an, more or less an equal amount of sun from all directions so it wouldn't have this phototropism problem. So I'm spraying this distilled water to remove the hard water spots that you just saw and also a little bit of residual mud from the pomegranate transplant to get it to sit upright to our right and shed a bunch of leaves. So there's a lot of water weight accumulating just by me spraying like this, which would be mimicked by rain in nature. The leaves are so big that this plant is starting to tilt like this, worryingly to the left. But I know that when it dries out, it'll be fine. It's day 196. There's been a huge amount of progress for this plant over the last month. So this episode actually didn't end up spanning as much time as I thought it would just 30 something days slightly over a month so as you can see the third set of leaves is bigger than ever this is the biggest leaf on this avocado plant right now and it still looks like there's a little bit of puffiness on the top side which means if there's a little bit more underside expansion and growth that leaf could be yet bigger and you can see how curled these other leaves are there's two of them that are really curled I don't know if it's coincidence that they're facing away from the sun, but maybe that has something to do with it. This one is really wrinkly looking because there's been so much topside expansion, just like with this one, and not enough uh, underside growth. At least that's what I think is going on here. So this is like the longest one. I think this is just a big one as well. And the new leaves are growing very fast as well. So these are my biggest avocado leaves yet. I've never seen anything this big online or offline. So multiple leaves are about 10 to 11 inches long and four inches wide. So by width, they definitely have anything from the second set beat. And this makes me think about how big the fourth set of leaves are gonna be. So this one is a really long one. Um, many of them seem to just 
have way too much growth on the top side. Uh, maybe that's just how these leaves can get so big. I have seen other people's videos where they seem to have different varieties. They took the avocado pits from to grow their seedlings and the leaf morphology and appearance is different. Some people have more color to their leaves. Uh, mine are just uh, straight up green from the get-go. I rotated the pot last week and had the side with a gap on the first and second stories facing the sun towards the outside of the balcony. So the leaves for the third set seem to have uh, grown over towards that direction to compensate for the weight imbalance. So I think that shouldn't be a problem going forward. This used to be the biggest leaf, but no longer is. Thanks for watching. All right, it's day 199 of this Growing Avocado Trees from Seed series. On this day, I did a little prep work to get sugar water in a spray bottle so I could spray sugar water all over the leaves of my plants. I got this idea from Gary Matsuoka, who runs the YouTube channel Gary's Best Gardening. He's a nursery owner with a very scientific approach to his plant growing. He's the reason why I use sandy loam now to grow all of my plants in 2020 rather than rotting organic material like uh, most other people do. So I've covered that topic in many other videos, but in the beginning of this video, I'm trying this idea to spray sugar water on the leaves of my plants to promote much faster growth. So in one of Gary's videos, he mentioned that this is the trick for getting 1,000-pound pumpkins. Otherwise, you can't get pumpkins over 500 pounds. It's that if you spray sugar water on the leaves of plants, um, in that case, a pumpkin vine, the sugar can be absorbed directly. And sugar is a product of plant photosynthesis, so it's an energy currency for the plant. So if you provide for a lot more resources exogenously, in addition to everything else the plant is already receiving, such as uh, sunlight and fertilizer and micronutrients and water, then it should be able to grow faster. It's a very interesting idea. Um, as I mentioned in the subtitles in the beginning, the foliar fertilization is um, something that I haven't really looked into until after I did this experiment. And by the way, I did another imidacloprid treatment um, recently, which is the second one for the year for all my plants. So basically, if you spray sugar water, it should be able to get in through the stomata for foliar fertilization. That's the act of spraying fertilizer directly onto the leaves. And it's said that for that, it gets in through the stomata, the little openings on the undersides of the leaves that regulate um, gaseous exchange and transpiration and things like that. So this is supposed to get sugar directly into the leaves, but I did this every other day and in the off days I sprayed distilled water to sort of re-dissolve the sugar and see if it would uh, help wash the leaves a little bit. I don't want to cake too much sugar on and cause burn, but at the same time um, I wanted to sort of reactivate the sugar by redissolving it. So here you can see I'm spraying sucrose water on the undersides of the leaves. At the time I didn't really um, look into you know where I should be spraying this but now that I think about it spraying the tops of the leaves is uh, pretty pointless and it damages the aesthetics. It takes a lot to wash it off. So after trying this for about a week on day 210, I gave up on spraying sugar water on my plant leaves because I didn't really notice an effect. So it was a very cool idea, but when I thought more about it, I just realized there's not a lot of sugar in a gallon. So one tablespoon, yeah, that might seem like a lot, but how much of that is actually getting into the stomata? getting into the plant and promoting growth, um, probably not that much. And on some of these bottom leaves, I actually did take uh, sugar water of the same concentration and soak some of the leaves briefly. And for uh, a plant that's having a real struggle growing um, after a transplant, I did soak the leaves for um, more than a day. 
and I didn't really see anything so I would have to conclude that this experiment uh, proves that it doesn't really do anything um, if any of you have experiences to the contrary please let me know and what your methods were but um, yeah the more I thought about it it's just uh, yeah it's not a whole lot of sugar for a plant this big and very little of it is actually getting into the, the leaves the, through the stomata it's mostly just caking on the leaves and as I've said before in years past uh, if you spray anything other than um, basically distilled water on plant leaves uh, you run the risk of causing leaf burn because you've got residue in this case uh, sucrose which just keeps trying to suck water out of the plant in this hot and dry environment and yeah there's there's no other water source the atmosphere is very dry around here so it's just sucking water away from the plant um, continuously I didn't want to run the risk of burning my avocado leaves although they're huge they're also very fragile in my impression unlike the Joshua tree or mango leaves or even the pomegranate leaves which can respawn very easily if something happens to them the avocado leaves once lost don't seem to come back uh, the plant gets taller but doesn't seem to replace the leaves so it's day 221 7 a.m. Uh, all the leaves are pointing upwards they're very erect and they have an acute angle relative to the axis of the stem it sort of suggests that the undersides of these leaves newly developing leaves grow faster than the top sides throughout the night so this is what you'll wake up to but as I'll show you in this next clip which was taken 12 hours later in the same day the leaves are all curled by 7 p.m. so that suggests that during that time of the day the top sides of the leaves grow faster than the undersides to produce this curling effect and this really bothered me with the second and third sets of newly developing leaves we're on our fourth set but by now I'm used to it because it's a recurring pattern so I know that there's nothing wrong the plant isn't lacking for water and fertilizer burn isn't about to happen for the leaves so this fourth set is coming along quite nicely and it's very curled and sort of unesthetic I would say in the beginning but in the end they're going to be monster leaves like this third set right here so that's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen although that 13th may just be the shoot apical marrow stem um, deciding to shoot up and create a fifth set of leaves I don't know but so far it looks like it could be 12 or 13 right there the fourth set of leaves is the biggest set of leaves I've ever had for this plant and I can't wait to see how big they get and also what happens for the fifth set of leaves so they come in waves for me I don't know if that happens for everyone but that's just the way it's been for my one plant here on day 231 you can see there's been a lot of development and it's amazing this thing just keeps getting taller and bigger so um, the first set of leaves just seems minuscule Is it six or seven I believe and one of them was one of those little vestigial leaves that doesn't do anything really it doesn't get any bigger than a, a tiny size so yeah it's just more and more of the same I just keep doing what I've been doing because it's been successful I am considering doing a transplant though because well I have no idea how big the root system is here and how healthy it is I hope it's a root ball uh, if it's not then I could be in some trouble with leaves this big this plant could be very susceptible to drying out and losing all of these giant leaves but it's growing in a sandy loam the root should be able to breathe very well and as you can see the fourth set of leaves is coming in on its own um, but despite me growing these in very well aerated soil and uh, pretty nice conditions uh, these leaves are 
maybe growing way too big, uh, just like the third set. So they do tend to sort of be misshapen until they're very mature. So two of the leaves from the third set are over 12 inches or 30 centimeters long. That's uh, astonishing length. And these tend to be on the thinner side compared to their length. But the fourth set of leaves, some of those are just really, really wide. So I don't know if they're going to get to the same length, but um, I think some of them are destined to have a, a bigger surface area than anything the third set has seen. So getting back to the sugar experiment again, it was very interesting, very fun. I was very eager to try it. But ultimately, it didn't pan out the way I thought it would. I thought I'd witness an explosion of growth and at least some of my plants. Definitely not the Joshua tree I was thinking. So it's day 234. It's late August 2020. My balcony plants are starting to get limited direct sunlight. I have a new series going on. And I moved away the giant Bangkok guava. So on day 238... I was prepping for a vacation, so I let this thing sit in a pretty tall saucer of water. But I've only tested this setup for three days, so I don't know how well it works. I know this plant can't go a week without being watered because its uh, water usage is so high, especially now that it's late in summer and it's so hot. So I did add two small scoops of miracle Grow but I'm kind of wondering if that layer of fertilizer water will just sit on top and have a hard time flowing through the pot. And I think this could use some extra fertilizer because these new leaves look a little uh, yellow, but that's nothing new really. I mean, that's what happened for the second and third sets. So on day 245, you can already see there's been a little bit of a burn by the time I came back. Legendary heat wave struck Southern California. It was uh, over 100 Fahrenheit. Tomorrow it's going to be 109 expected or 43 Celsius, which is very hot for this area. I know it gets hotter in the inland desert, but not for this area. Three of my newest leaves are badly burned at the tips. This looks to be fertilizer burn rather than damage from dehydration or purely the heat. So I'm going to prune these because they're ugly and relatively small. Well, this one's a little bigger, but they're just going to suck up resources and always be ugly. And they're going to get a lot bigger, so I would rather have those resources go to all these other leaves. You can see little buds above the petioles. On day 246, it was already 103 Fahrenheit at 9 a.m. If you really crank up the volume for this clip, you can hear the leaves fall to the ground and also the wood crackle on the trees outside. So I moved my avocado sapling indoors because it got to 109 later that day at least and that would have spelled certain death for my avocado plant. Past a certain point well over 100 Fahrenheit uh, the leaves just will all die and the stem will get burned as well. And if that happens, that'll basically undo the entire series. So the next day, I'm going to take this out because the weather report suggests that temperatures are going to be much lower going forward. So I think the crisis is over, although in San Diego, Southern California, you should never count out uh, Santa Ana winds coming in early October, which could bring even higher temperatures sometimes and extreme dryness that would also finish off a big avocado sapling like this. So this one leaf at the top has a lot of turker pressure and I hope I get either a fifth set of leaves or the fourth set continues. Thanks for watching.